and welcome to the Crazy Sock Lady YouTube channel. My name is Kay and in this video I am going to be showing you how to knit socks using two circular needles. So first I'm going to go over a little bit on how this tutorial will run, what notions you will need. If you just want to skip ahead to the tutorial part just look right down below this video in the description box. I'm going to have the tutorial broken up into different sections. Uh, when it starts, the cuff, leg, heel, all of that's gonna be broken up. You can just go to that time listed there and jump right ahead to wherever you need to be within the tutorial. So notions that you will need for this. What I'm gonna be using, I have Chowgu needles. I have two 24 inch needles. I will have all of the notions that I used listed below with links to those. So if you wanna head down there and look at that, if you still need to purchase your notions and wanna do so via those links, um, that'll be there for you. But I'm using two 16 inch. Now you can use two 24 inch. That's actually what I started doing when I first learned how to do two circular needles. I was using two 24 inch needles, but I just found that the cable hung, like when I was knitting, the needles would hang down a little too much for me. I just found it that everything just kind of got in the way. For me, it's much uh, more manageable to use two 16 inch. I know some people as well will use a 16 and a 24 inch as a way to differentiate between needle one and needle two. Totally up to you um, how you prefer to do that. Give it a try on one and then if you find you don't like it, maybe try try another size of the needles because like I said the 24 inch was not working for me but 16 inches good so you need two circular needles in the length that you are choosing to use this is a US 1 2.25 millimeter needle that I'm going to be using both circulars are the same size needles if you already have your preferred needle size if you like to use a 2.5 millimeter or whatever it may be please go ahead and use that for this. I like to use a US 1 2.25 millimeter for fingering weight yarn, so that is what I am using. I will be um, knitting a size medium throughout the pattern on this size. Other notions that you will need, I do suggest that you have a stitch marker when we get to the heel section. I like to place that after the heel turn and when I start picking up my gusset stitches. So I do suggest that you have a stitch marker. I also like to use light bulb progress keepers and I'm showing you a different sock here. This is a sock from my flyers tutorial because I am just now getting ready to start the um, two circular tutorial so I don't have my sock done yet but I like to use these light bulb stitch markers to count my rows and I'll go through that in the tutorial but if you want to try that um, or you want to mark needle one like the front of your sock with a light bulb stitch marker I do suggest that you have have those. So this tutorial will go through the entire sock cuff down, starting at the cuff, going all the way down to the toe. I will walk you through every step of the process of knitting socks. I do not have a written pattern to follow this. So if you've done my nine inch um, DPN or magic loop patterns, the tutorials here on YouTube, you know that I have a written pattern to accompany them. So I did not write a separate written pattern to accompany the two circulars. I'm just gonna suggest that you follow the magic loop because it is broken up the same way. You have a needle one, you have a needle two, your heel, your gusset, everything is on needle two. It's all the same way as magic loop. So I just suggest if you want a written pattern to accompany this video tutorial, you check out the magic loop pattern. Now just please keep in mind that there are times listed in the magic loop pattern and that's gonna be different from this tutorial. So those times listed are for the magic loop tutorial. Um, but as far as just a written pattern to accompany this, the magic loop one is broken up the same exact way. So I did not do another written pattern for this at this time. In the future, if there's enough of a request, um, maybe I could do that, but I just didn't see the need to do another written pattern when it's broken up the same exact way as magic loop. So let's see what else I will have. I'm doing the size medium for this tutorial. Across the bottom of the screen, I will have for like small, medium, large, the counts that you need for different sections of the sock. So you can follow along there. When you are choosing your size to do for these socks, please keep in mind that you want to choose your size based on your circumference. And I do have more information about that in the description box down below this video. 
going over the different sizes and what the measurements are for different sizes. So you wanna go with the circumference at the widest part of your foot, which is typically about the ball of your foot when you're standing flat. You wanna measure that circumference there. And that's how you wanna pick your size. Um, you do not wanna go based on just, I wear a US nine, what size do I do? Um, US women's nine or something because everybody's foot can be different. You can wear a nine but have a very narrow foot or a nine and have a very wide foot. So you really wanna go off that circumference, not worry about your shoe size when you're picking your size that you're gonna cast on. Then when we get to your foot length, I'll walk you through how long you need to knit the foot based on your shoe size. Like what point do you stop? So I also will have links down below for a chart that will go over shoe sizes in inches. So if you are knitting a gift sock or something and you know they wear a US 9 women's, you can look up that chart and see how many inches is that shoe size? How long is, is that fit foot typically? I think that about covers it. So we're ready to jump right in. I hope you've got your, your needles, your fingering weight yarn, and you are ready to start learning how to knit socks on two circular needles. Okay, we are ready to begin. I wanna go over the yarn that I'm using because I forgot to do that in the intro. This is yarn donated by Mandy's Makings. And this is in her French Roast colorway. And it is on her 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon base fingering weight yarn. It is a just absolutely beautiful blue. So to begin, we are only gonna need one of our needles. So I'm gonna take this extra one and I'm gonna set it aside because we do not need it just yet. And I'm gonna be casting on for a size medium, so I'm going to need to cast on 64 stitches. I'm gonna show you a little trick for casting on. Just that helps me make sure I have enough yarn, and this length that I pull out will work for small, medium, or large in any of my patterns. Um, this is what works for me. You may have to do two arms lengths. Everybody's arms are different lengths, so this may not be exactly what works for you, but you can play around with it and see what works and then just remember and put that that note for future cast-ons. So I like to take, I'll put a video in here as well showing how I do this, but I take the end of the yarn and put it between my thumb and my pointer finger and then I pull back on that, holding this right there, pull back all the way up to the top of my shoulder. This is what was at the top of my shoulder. I take that and I put it between my thumb and my pointer, and then I pull it up to the crease where my elbow is. For me, that works. This is what was the crease in my, at the crease in my elbow. That works for me for casting on a small, medium, or a large. Just make sure I have enough yarn and I don't run out at the end of my cast on. So to begin, we're going to be doing a long tail cast on. I have my tail yarn down here, working yarn coming from that direction. And we're gonna set up to do this long tail cast on by first doing a slip knot. So this is the point that was at the crease in my elbow and I'm going to take my working yarn and I'm gonna wrap this around and back. Do that one more time. So we've just went around the backs of my fingers then back and just lay this over to the left. Then you're gonna take the tip of your needle, you're gonna stick it through that loop you created, grab the working yarn back here, pull it through, and then we're just gonna tighten this up. We have our two yarns hanging down there. We're just gonna pull that tight. And now we're kind of already set up. When I stick those through there, I grab this, pull it tight. You don't want it to be crazy tight, but you want it to be tight enough um, to create a good stitch there. So I've got that pulled tight there and we're already kind of set up here to do the long tail cast on, but I'll walk you through in case you didn't. It's an automatic thing for me, I think, to just immediately get set up. So if you let go of everything, back here is our tail yarn. This right here is our working yarn. So what we want to do is stick our pointer finger and our thumb in between those. With these three fingers, I grab both of those strands. And you're gonna set up like you're gonna do a slingshot. Okay, 
you want to pull it down like this. You're going to take, I have my pointer finger here just holding on to that so it doesn't slide off the needle. But you're going to go under this strand right here, around, grab the strand going over your pointer finger, and then pull it through. Take your thumb out, pull that right there, and that will tighten your stitch up. Again, don't pull it too tight. Then pull down like you're going to do a slingshot again under the loop, the front loop going around your thumb, grab the loop, the front one, got a back one back there, but you wanna grab the front one going around your pointer finger and then pull it back through the loop on your thumb. Take your thumb out, grab the strand down here, pull it out to tighten it up. You can pause and rewatch this as many times as needed. I also like to do a German twisted cast on, but long tail's pretty, pretty basic for beginners. So that's why I'm doing this one for this tutorial. I'll show you this a couple more times. So you're set up for a slingshot under the loop on your thumb, grab the one on your pointer finger, pull it through the loop on your thumb. One more time. So that's how you do a long tail cast on. You're gonna cast on however many stitches you need for the size that you're doing. For the size I'm doing, it's 64. So I'm gonna cast on 64 stitches and then we're gonna get it split between our two circular needles. So I now have 64 stitches on my first circular needle. And now we're gonna put half of these stitches onto our second circular needle. So for me, that's gonna mean 32 stitches on each. So to do that, I just put these stitches that are already on this needle over in my left hand, and we're just going to transfer these over. Now you could cast on half on one needle, half on the other as you go, but I just find it's easier, cast them all on one and then split it. That's how I do it for Magic Loop, DPNs, everything like that. So we're just gonna slide these over from one needle to the next. Remember to do half of the stitches that you're doing for your size. Go ahead and get those split and then meet me back here and I'll show you what it looks like. So here it is split. We have both of our needles here, half the stitches on one, half the stitches on the other. So now what we are going to do is just hold the needles in your left hand like that and we're gonna push the work, the yarn, up to the other side so that we can begin knitting. The reason we didn't just like twist it and start it on that side is we want our working yarn to be in the back. So if we move everything over to these other needles on the right, everything will be set up on the back. Okay, making sure everything is set up here. What you want to do is make sure that all of the bottoms of the stitches are on the bottoms of your needles. So you don't want anything to be twisted. And if something got twisted, this is what it would look like. You would have the bottom bumps of the stitches coming up and over. That would mean it's twisted. So you wanna go all the way down both needles making sure that you just have the tops of the stitches facing up on the top of your needles. Your working yarn and your tail, both of those are coming from the back. And now we are going to join to knit in the round. So I like to bring everything up on both of these needles on the end, just to make sure everything is set up properly. Now what we are going to do is this back needle right here, we are actually gonna pull it so that our stitches are on the center of this cable. Like that. Still make sure nothing is twisted. You wanna find your working yarn. Make sure that's what you grab to work with. And I'm gonna bring it up in between the cable and this needle 
and just kind of lay it right there. Now we wanna make sure we grab the proper needle. This is where I think it can get tricky with working with two circulars. And I know there are a lot of different tricks that people utilize to avoid grabbing the wrong needle. So right now I'm just gonna show you how to grab, to try to make sure you're grabbing the right needle. Once we get into the leg of the sock or maybe even a little further into the cuff, I am gonna show you what happens if you grab the wrong needle and how to fix that. And I will have that time stamped down below. If you happen to do that before I show it and you're like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I'll have a time stamped, just look down below for how to fix grabbing the wrong needle <laughs> or something along those lines. And I'll show you how to do it because it truly is not the end of the world and it is so easy to fix. So I do not want you to stress about it if it happens. I'm gonna walk you through how to fix that. But to make sure you're grabbing the right needle, this is needle one. This is gonna be the front of our sock. You just want to come right down here, grab that, make sure you have not grabbed the back needle, make sure you've grabbed the front needle that's all connected. And this is what we are going to start knitting with. We're set up here, we have the other end of needle one and we are ready to join to knit in the round. We are not gonna do anything fancy to do this. We are just grabbing our working yarn, making sure that it's coming from the bottom of these stitches and up through here and not wrapped around the needle. We're gonna do a knit one, purl one ribbing for this sock. So to join to knit in the round, we are just sticking our needle through this first stitch and doing a knit stitch. Shove everything up a little further on my needle here. And then I'm just going to give this tail end a little bit of a tug. Now, I don't do anything special to join that to avoid any gap. There can be a gap there, and I will show you at the end of the sock how I close that up using this tail end here to when I weave it in. Super easy. I've never seen the need to do any kind of a little trick here. Um, just because I can close it up at the end, I already have to weave that tail end, so why not just do it then? Okay, now we are going to purl. You've just joined in the round, didn't need to do anything fancy, you just knit that first stitch. And then purl, and we're just gonna knit and purl across. I'm gonna work all these stitches on needle one. And you're just leaving needle two hanging. We're not doing anything with it at this point. And I like to sit at, uh, I talked in the intro about how I started out with 24 inch and decided 16 inch worked better for me. I do a lot of knitting at my island, in the kitchen, at my work table right here during the day. And I just found, and even when it was hitting my lap, I just found that like, this is what I would get constantly <laughs> as I tried to sit at a table um, where I had my knitting held out over the Islander table. And then even so it would just bang around in my lap. And so that's why I went with a 16 inch over a 24 inch because I don't have that. It doesn't bang against the Island. It doesn't bang against the table, my lap. To me, it just made it much more comfortable and manageable to have a 16 inch versus a 24 inch. Totally do what you are comfortable with. Okay, so we have just knit all the way across needle one. Now what do we do? You're just gonna drop that end and you're going to turn your work, bringing this towards you, turn your work over to this side. Now we are set up, our needle one is on the back and we are ready to work needle two. So what we need to do is pull this, grab the tip of your needle, hold onto your work, pull it so that needle two, that all those stitches are in the center of the cable for needle one. Now we are ready to work needle two, which is the back of our sock. To do that, we're going to push 
the stitches for the back of our sock up onto the right needle that was hanging over on the right. Push them up here so that they are ready to work. If you've dropped your working yarn, make sure you pick it back up, bringing it up in between and not wrapped around or not wrapped around this way. Let me show you what that would look like here. If you've dropped it, you wanna make sure you bring it back up right there. You do not want to bring it around this way and up. That will twist your work. So make sure it comes up in between the cable and the needle. Now you wanna make sure you're grabbing the right needle again. So you have your needle hanging in the back here. That's needle one. I just kind of follow it down. Needle two, oops, and don't drop it. <laughs> follow it down with my finger. Needle two, make sure that's the one I've grabbed, the one that I'm ready to work. And we're just going to knit this first stitch, then purl and knit and purl across. So if you're familiar with Magic Loop, you can see how this is pretty similar. You have your needle one, which is always the front of your sock. Needle two is always the back of your sock. When I get to the end of this realm, I'll show you how to turn it again. And I'll talk about how you could mark to know what is needle one and needle two and the trick that I use to know what is what without a marker. So we've knit to the, or we've done our knit one, purl one ribbing to the end of needle two. We're just gonna drop that and we're going to turn our work. And now I'm going to, I'm gonna pull this up just like this, just so I can show you. How can you tell now that we've got a round done, what is needle one and what is needle two? So you can place a stitch marker just on this needle in between any stitches. I'll grab one and show you what I mean. But the way that I like to do it is just by where my tail is that I started with. So if I'm to this point and I see that my tail end is over here on the right side, I know that this needle in the front is needle one. This is the front of my sock. This is needle two. This is the back of my sock. You can tell by where your tail end is that this is the beginning of round. So that'll be needle one, and then that's needle two. Let me grab a stitch marker and I'll show you how you could just place that on there if you want to know that way. So I've grabbed just a light bulb stitch marker here or progress keeper, I apologize. And you could just place it on any of the stitches right there on your work. There we go. Just place it right there like that. That's gonna tell you that the needle that this is placed on the work, that's needle one. So however you choose to, to mark that, so like I said, I typically never mark um, what is needle one, what is needle two, because I just look at where my tail end of the yarn is. Okay, so how do we set up to continue going now? I'm going to show you that a couple more times, and then I'll turn you loose to do the cuff and meet you back here for the leg. So needle one, we are ready to work the front of our sock again. So we are going to push these stitches up onto the right needle. Follow it down with my finger, grab the cable, our working yarn. Make sure it's coming from bet up between here. 
and then we're going to knit purl across. Take that marker off of there. Sometimes I find if it's on the stitch you just did, it can be a bit of a pain. Okay, we are at the end of needle one. Just drop that needle down there, turn your work. You're gonna pull at needle one now that it's turned so that the stitches are in the center of the cable. Needle two is now in front and we are going to push the stitches up onto the right needle for needle two. Follow down, grab that, and we are ready to just knit purl across again. Now, if you're worried about getting ladders in your stitches, and I'll show this again on the leg as well, but the instinct can be to pull you can get ladders at this point and this point where your gauge is a little off and it shows. So the instinct can be to pull that first stitch like I just did to pull it really tight. Normal tension on that first stitch. Then the second stitch, whether it's a knit or a purl, you want to purl it, which is what I'm doing here with the ribbing, and then give it a little bit of a tug. Second stitch a little tighter, first stitch normal. I know when I first started, my instinct was always to pull that first stitch tighter, but that first stitch, you want normal tension. If you pull it too tight, it can actually make your ladders a little worse. So normal tension, first stitch, second stitch, a little tighter. Okay, we are at the end of needle two. Turn your work again. Pull needle two so that the back of your sock is on the center of the cable. And then you're ready to work needle one again just by pushing that up. The stitches onto the needle, following down, making sure you grab that cable and needle and you're ready to continue on knitting your cuff. So you can, of course, pause, rewind, watch that as many times as you need to kind of get the needle working down. I'm going to do 20 rounds of knit one, purl one ribbing for this cuff. You can do shorter, longer, whatever you prefer. Um, and following the vanilla socks pattern, I'm gonna do 20 rounds of knit one, purl one ribbing. And then I will meet you back here to show you what your cuff should look like and to talk about the leg of our sock. I have knit the 20 rounds of knit one, purl one ribbing for my cuff. So this is what your cuff should look like. You have the, this is the outside or the right side of your sock. Now we're ready to work on the legs. So in following the 
Vanilla Socks um, on Magic Loop Pattern, which is what I suggested that y'all follow for this tutorial because the layout is the same. I'm going to do 60 rounds for the leg. You can make your leg shorter. You could make your leg longer. It is completely up to you and your personal preference. I'm just going to stick with that pattern and do 60 rounds for the leg. So we are set up just the same. I've made sure I've got needle one here pulled up and all you're going to do for the leg is just knit every stitch for 60 rounds so just knit all the way across needle one Everything as far as how you are turning your work, pulling and adjusting your needles is going to be the exact same as when you were doing your ribbing. The only difference is you are just knitting every stitch. There are no purls. So I've knit across needle one. I'm going to turn my work. Pull needle one so that the stitches are in the center of the cable. Then we have needle two and I'm going to adjust that so that the stitches are on the right needle pull this around and knit across needle two. So I'm going to knit a little bit into my leg and then I'm going to come back and show you how I like to count my rounds and place markers as I'm knitting. And also um, at that time I will show you what to do if you pull the wrong needle. <laughs> So go ahead, um, you can knit a little bit and meet me back here. I'm probably going to knit about 15 rounds and then meet you back here to show you that. I've knit 15 rounds into my leg. So this is what your leg should look like when you're just knitting every stitch. You're going to have a lovely stockinette fabric there. And now I'm going to show you how I count my rounds using these progress keepers. So I always know that I'm going to do... 60 rounds for my leg typically for a longer leg on my sock that's what I prefer so I like to place a light bulb stitch marker every 10 rounds so on the 10th round I place this marker then count 10 again on the 10th round place this marker it just makes it quick and easy to see how many rounds you've done and then I'll show you when we get to the heel how I mark all that and how I do the foot. But I will mark all the way from 10 rounds into here and all the way till I start my toe. And then it just makes it super easy to count, see how many I did for the leg, how many I did for the foot, and then make this second sock to match how many rounds I did for the first sock. And all of that will make sense as we continue on into the sock. But I'll show you how I place a marker to count my rounds. So I like to go in on a purl you can see the purl stitch there and count up just on needle one, just a little bit in from the um, beginning of round. So you can see the purl ridge here. Let's make sure I can get that to focus real good. See the purl ridge and the stitch connected to that purl ridge. That's the purl stitch. You do not want to count that one. You want to count the one directly after that. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then I stick it under both legs of the stitch and close that up. Then I'll just knit a little bit further and then count again. And then once I know I'm like, it, it, I've marked the 50th and I need to really keep track, I'll just make sure I only knit up to the next part. So now I'm going to show you what to do if you accidentally pull the wrong needle. So we're ready to work across needle one. I'm going to put all of my work on needle one, these stitches up onto the right needle. And now typically... So let's grab it like this. If I was ready to go, I like to follow it down with my finger. Grab that to make sure I've got needle one. But let's just say for whatever reason, I forgot to do that this time. And I just grabbed a needle and I've grabbed this one. For one, I feel like 
using a 16 inch especially, I'm going to, I'm gonna hold this needle in my hand so it doesn't bang against the table. But I feel like if I'm using a 16 inch especially, I'm gonna pull that around and I'm gonna be like, man, that feels awful tight. So I'm gonna know that I've pulled the wrong needle because let's just drop these back down and pull the correct needle. You can see I have lots of room here. But if I accidentally grab the wrong needle, look at how tight that is because the needle for it is out here. Now you could give it a hard yank and yank that needle all the way out and then you've got to pick your stitches back up. But let's just say you're using a longer needle um, and you grab this and you knit with this. So I'm gonna knit all the way across and I'm gonna show you what happens. And I'm going to tuck that through the sock there so it does not bang. But I feel like you're gonna know as soon as you start knitting that it just does not feel right. And in using a 24 inch, or even if you're using a 32 inch, if that's what you have on hand and that's what you're using, and that's the length of your cable, you may not notice this as much, but with the 16 inch, I feel like the circumference is so small, you're immediately gonna feel like, oh, wait a minute, this just does not feel right. Something feels off. And you can look and see that you've got the wrong cable or the wrong needle pulled forward to work with, that you've pulled needle, needle two forward to work with. Oh, this needle fell out. Okay. So this is what will happen. You'll finish that and you'll see that one needle is no longer connected to your sock. And you may be like, oh my gosh, what did I do? How do I fix this? It's very simple, I promise you. It is very simple to fix this. So here's what's happened. I've just completely knit this up and it's just, it's looking a mess. Like how, how in the world do you fix that? Um, so here's what we're going to do. It is a bit of a mess. All we're going to do is transfer our stitches back to this. It is a pain, yes. <laughs> but that is all that you have to do if you have made that mistake, is just transfer these stitches. Well, let me show you what I've done here. So this is the front of my sock here. There's my um, progress keeper and then my tail end is to my right so I know that this is the front of my sock. I'm going to turn it so that the back is facing me but we're not going to mess with any of these stitches here. These stitches here that should be on needle one that are now on needle two we are just going to transfer them from this needle back over to here. It is a bit of a pain to have to do this if you pull the wrong needle. But it is not a hard fix. It is not something that is going to completely mess your sock up. If you make that mistake, you just slide these stitches over to needle one, to the empty needle that just dropped out. done and you're back on track that's it that's all you have to do if you make a mistake um you just like i like to do is follow down with my finger grab that needle and go like I said at the beginning, there are other tricks and things that you can do that you can try if you find that you're having a hard time with that. But I just like to take that finger down. I don't even have to look anymore. I can do it without looking. Just guide my finger down and make sure I get that cable that's right there with the needle attached to um, either the front or the back of the sock, whichever side it is that I am working. So I'm gonna turn you loose to do your leg. I'm gonna do 60 rounds. If you want a shorter one, do a shorter one. Whatever you're going to do, I want you to come back here when you are one round away from the total rounds that you want. So I want 60 rounds for my leg. I'm going to knit 59 rounds and then meet you back here and show you how we do our heel flap. We will start with that, then our heel turn and our gusset. That is when all of the magic starts to happen with a sock. So go ahead. But do your leg one round less than the total amount of rounds and meet me back here for the next section. I've completed 59 rounds for the leg. My total leg length will be 60 rounds following the pattern. But like I said, we want to get one round before the total length you want for your leg. So for me, that's 59 rounds. 
And now what we're going to do is knit across just needle one, just the first half of the round. And that is going to get us ready to start our heel flap on the back of our sock. So I'm just gonna go ahead and knit across needle one. Then we will turn to work the heel flap on needle two only. We will not be touching needle two, or I'm sorry, excuse me, needle one until we are done with the heel flap and the heel turn. All right, last couple of stitches here. Turn our work. Make sure that needle one we have pulled up so that the work is in the center of the cable for needle one. And now we're going to work with just needle two. And we are going to start the heel flap. So our heel flap is a repeat of two rows. Row one is our right side row. And then row two is going to be a wrong side row. So I will go over those with you. For row one, we are going to slip purlwise and then knit one. Slip one purlwise from left to right needle, knit one. Slip, knit. All the way across for row one. That is row one. Now what we're going to do is turn our work. So right now the right side is facing us. We are just going to turn it. You're gonna have the front of the sock facing you, but this is the needle we're working on and this is the wrong side of this needle two. So now you wanna make sure you grab the other end of needle two and we're going to do our wrong side row and what that is, is slip the first stitch purlwise from left to right needle and then purl across. So just purl every stitch across after that first slip stitch. And those are the two rows that we are going to be repeating for the entire heel flap. Row one and then row two. Just get across to the end of this needle here and then we will chat for a minute about the heel flap before I turn you loose to knit it. Okay, I've purled all the way across the row. Again, needle one, the front of the sock is not being touched this whole time. We are only working back and forth across needle one. We are not working in the round right now, just back and forth. So you're gonna turn your work again and you're gonna be ready to do another right side row, row one, which is slip one, purl wise, knit one. Slip one, knit one, all the way across. Then turn and do your wrong side row, which is the slip one, and then purl across. You're just gonna repeat those two rows for the total amount that you need for the size that you're doing. For the size that I'm doing, I'm gonna repeat rows one and two 16 times. 16 times do that repeat, that'll give me 32 rows total. And then once that is done, we will meet back here to do the heel turn. So just make sure you're back and forth on needle two. Finish up that heel flap and then we will work on the heel turn. I've completed the heel flap. 32 rows total. Just repeating row one and two 
16 times. You can see all of the slip stitches here. That really helps to enforce and make a strong heel flap. And then this is what your wrong side looks like. And a little trick for counting, you can cross off your rows for your heel flap. That's how I had done it for years. And then I started counting these longer lines here. You can see those, that's where you've slipped your stitches. So you can just count those by twos. It's a little more difficult to see in a darker yarn, but you can just count these two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, and 32. And that'll tell you if you have done all of the rows needed for your heel flop. Now we're ready to do our heel turn. And for me, this is where the magic really starts to happen with the sock. Right now we have our tube for our leg and our heel flap sticking out here. And now we're going to turn it so it really is starting to take on the shape of a sock. We're gonna be working back and forth for the heel flap, just, or I'm sorry, for the heel turn, just like we did for the heel flap. And the first row, we are going to slip this first stitch. For the size that I'm doing, I'm going to knit 16. So slip the first stitch, then I'm knitting 16. Do what you need for the size that you are doing. Double check I've done the right amount. Yep, and then we are going to do a slip, slip knit. So we're slipping the first stitch as if to knit, slipping the second stitch as if to knit, and put your left needle through the front and knit those two stitches together through the back loop. Then knit one. That's our first row. Now we're going to turn our work so that the wrong side of the heel flap is facing us. Yarn is in the front. We are going to slip the first stitch purl three for all sizes. Then purl two stitches together. Purl one. Now we're gonna turn back to the right side and now we're gonna re be repeating two rows, row one and row two, for the heel turn. Row one, you are going to slip the first stitch as if to purl with the yarn in the back, and we're going to knit across to the gap. If you look over here, you can see this gap right here in between stitches. We need to knit across to one stitch before that gap, and then we're gonna close this gap up. So one stitch and then the gap, and we're gonna close that up with a slip, slip knit. Close the gap and then knit one. Turn your work so that the wrong side is facing you. Yarn is in the front. Slip the first stitch as if to purl and purl across to one stitch before the gap. If you look there, you can see our stitches, the gap, and then the rest of our stitches. So purl across to one stitch before that gap. There's our one stitch and our gap, and we're going to purl this stitch and the next stitch after the gap together. So purl two together, closing the gap, and then purl one. And those are the two rows that we're gonna be repeating. I'll show you that one more time, each row, and then I'll turn you loose to complete the heel turn. So the row one, yarn is in the back, slip as if to purl, that first stitch, and then knit across to one stitch before the gap. 
You can definitely feel it if you have your thumb, if you hold your needle like I do, I can definitely feel when that gap's coming up. So there's our stitch and our gap. Now we need to close this gap by doing a slip slip knit. And then knit one. Now we're going to turn our work so that the wrong side is facing us. Yarn is in the front. Slip the first stitch as if to purl. And then purl across to one stitch before the gap. There's our stitch and then our gap and we're going to do a purl two together to close up that gap. And then purl one. Then turn your work back so that the right side's facing you and you can see your heel turn is starting to take shape there. And you're gonna keep repeating those two rows until all of these stitches have been worked. And I'll show you what that looks like when we get back, back here. But you just wanna keep repeating row one and row two until there are no stitches left on either side of this. So go ahead and continue your heel turn and I'll meet you back here and then we will be ready to pick up our gusset stitches. Our heel turn is done. Look at that, you can see it's taken shape there. You pull the sock flat here so you can see on its side. This is the magic part for me. So we went from just a tube tube with the heel flap to now look at that we are turning we've turned our heel and we are going in the direction of our foot now so this is really the magic part for me and I feel like it's magic every single time I do it still to this day so now we are ready to pick up our gusset stitches which is going to be these stitches all along the sides of our heel flap and that's going to help us give a little bit more room in this area right here of our foot and then we're going to do some decreases and finish off our foot and then our toe. So picking up the gusset stitches is nothing to be worried about or scared about. It's super simple and we're going to be picking them all up on needle two. That is where all of our gusset stitches are going to go. Needle one is not gonna change how many stitches we have on that front needle. It's going to remain the same. Everything will be added on to needle two. So we're gonna pick up stitches along both sides of the heel flap area. So our heel turn, I ended up with 18 stitches here. You can double check that for the size you're doing if you're not doing the size medium like I am. So now I need to knit across half of these total stitches. And then we're gonna place a stitch marker. I have just a little ring stitch marker here. So for me, I'm knitting across nine stitches. And then I'm gonna place that marker. For our gusset decreases, this is going to be our beginning of round. The beginning of round for us was always over on this side. Right now for gusset decreases, we're shifting it to this center point in the heel flap. So place your marker and then knit across the remaining half of your heel turn stitches. And now we're ready to pick up the first half of our gusset stitches. So when we're looking at the side of our heel flap here, we have some V's going down the side there. Brighten this up even more so that we can see those. See those V's going down the side? That is what we want to pick up our gusset stitches in, is that V. We're gonna do it with this needle right here. And 
and we're going to go under both legs of the V. And then we're going to wrap the yarn around our needle and pull it through. I'm gonna tuck this needle in so it's not dragging so much. That's one stitch. We need to pick up 16 stitches along this side of the heel flap for the size medium that I'm doing. And if you pick up 17 stitches, even 18 stitches, it is not a huge deal. You're just gonna be decreasing down a little bit more um, than if you pick the 16 stitches, but not a big deal at all. Typically, I will actually have more stitches than 16 that I pick up, and it's not a huge deal. I just decrease a couple extra rounds and it's fine. And if you pick up any extra stitches, it can help close up any gaps that you have in your gusset area, especially when you get to this point right here. So a good rule of thumb is 16, but like I said, if you pick up extra, helps close up any gaps here. Not a big deal, you're just doing an extra decrease. And I don't do any special thing like decrease two on the first round, I'll just do extra decrease rounds. It It's not gonna make a, a big difference in the look and the fit of your sock. So we're gonna go to, you can see right there, the yarn going through that is the one that we went through. So now we need to look and I kind of usually just roll this down a little bit and then you'll see the V's under both legs of the V, wrap the yarn, pull it through. Do this all the way down the side of your heel flap, picking all of these up onto needle two. I typically anymore will not even count to see how many stitches I'm picking up. I just work down the side of the heel flap going into the um, V's as they come. And when I start to get a little close, I just double check to see what that stitch connecting the front and the back there is going to, to make sure I've picked up the last V. And then we are picking up a stitch in this in-between area. This is the ladder. You see those lines going across there? That's the ladder between the two stitches on the front and the back. So we wanna go into that top ladder, sticking our needle into it from front to back and then we are going to knit it through the back loop so that we've picked up an extra stitch right there in the center to help close up any gaps. You can still have a small gap. I typically always do on one side of my sock only. I'm not bothered by it. Um, I know there are so many extra little tips and tricks and things that you can do. I'll show you at the end of the sock when we're weaving in our ends how I close that up if I have one. I'm not phased by it. I've done socks like this for years and it's just this is how I do it pick up all the V's that I can pick up that extra stitch and then if I still have a gap I use a tail end to weave it in and, or to close it up I'm sorry and we'll go over that at the end of the tutorial okay so we're turning our work now we've picked up all of the gusset stitches on this side of the sock so now we're going to pull this back needle so that that work is on the center of needle two and we're finally going to work needle one again so get your needle one set up here and you're just going to work across needle one like i said needle one remains the same you do not add any stitches onto it work all the way across needle one and then we're ready to pick up the second half of our gusset stitches. Worked across needle one, so turn your work. Pull needle one so that the work is on the center of the cable. Now we're ready to work this half of the gusset. 
I'm gonna push my work up so that my needle is right there. And we're gonna grab this end of the needle. And this is what we're gonna start picking up the gusset stitches. Make sure you've got needle two. Your work is towards the tip. Don't put it way up on the tip or it, it might just fall off on you, but it's up towards the tip. The first thing that we need to do is pick up that extra stitch in the ladder in between the front and the back. So you just wanna come right here and grab this top ladder. I usually grab it with the right, but then place it on the left from front to back and then knit it through the back loop. Then start looking for your V's. For this side, I always try to get down as far as I can with the V's that I see to help close up any gaps that there may be. So just look around, you can kind of pull your sock to the side there. Look to see where you see that first V. Go under both legs of the V, wrap the yarn and pull it through. And then you're just picking up stitches the same way that you did on the other side in every V that you come to. Again, a good rule of thumb, a good number to go by, make sure you have at least this amount is 16 for this size that I'm doing. But like I said, anymore, I just don't even count. I just pick up a stitch in every V that I come to along the side of the heel flap. And there we are up to the work that is on this other needle for needle two. And now we're just gonna work across to our beginning of round marker, which we placed in the center of our heel turn stitches. I'm just gonna work to one stitch before that so that my marker doesn't fall off while I show you how this looks. So here's the back of our sock. We have picked up gusset stitches on both sides of our heel flap. There's what the front of our sock looks like. Now we are ready to begin our gusset decreases. We picked up a lot of extra stitches here. Front needle one remained the same. This back, we have a lot more stitches than we started out with. So we're gonna decrease back down to our original stitch count. For whatever size you're doing, whatever your original stitch count was for needle two, that's what you wanna get back to. We are gonna decrease every other round. Round one is our decrease round. Round two is just a plain knit round, meaning you will just knit every stitch all the way around. For our decrease round, we are going to be decreasing right at this point and right at this point. Since we have extra stitches on needle two, we are always decreasing on needle two only, nothing on needle one, it's just knit across every time. So this is gonna be our first decrease, this is gonna be our second decrease, and then we're back to the beginning of round. So I'll walk you through that. For round one, slip your marker there. You're working across to three stitches before the end of this needle before the end of needle two. So you're just knitting across until you have three stitches left on needle two. And then we will do our first decrease. Okay, we have three stitches left. So our decrease right here is going to be a knit two together. So we are going to knit these two stitches together. Knit one, turn our work. 
we're gonna work across needle one remember no decreases on needle one it has stayed the same so just knit all the way across Turn your work, pull needle one so that the work is on the center of the cable. Push your needle in here for needle two. Now we're ready to do our second decrease on this round. We are going to knit one, slip, slip, knit. And now we're going to knit across to our beginning of round marker. Okay, I've knit to my beginning of round marker. Now it's just a plain knit round. So you knit all the way around, back to the beginning of round marker, and then you do your decrease round again. I love having the beginning of round marker in the center of my heel turn for a couple of reasons. One of the reasons is because it makes it easy to split your stitches and count. So I can count and see how many stitches I have over here and how many I have over here. And I know for the size that I'm doing, I need to get back to 32 stitches total on needle two. With that beginning of round marker in the center, I can get back to 16 on this side of the marker and 16 on this side of the marker. If you have done like I have and you did not count to see how many stitches you were picking up, um, or you know that you picked up 17 or 18 on one side and 16 on the other, that is perfectly fine. Honestly, that is how I do it. Usually I have more, a stitch more on one side than the other, and I don't even count anymore as I'm picking those up, like I said, but when I'm decreasing back down, I may get to a spot where I have, I'm done decreasing on, let's say this side, but I still have 17 or 18 on this side. I just keep doing, knit one round, decrease one round, not decreasing on the side that is already finished and still decreasing a couple of extra rounds on the other side. It doesn't always work out that way, but I just don't count anymore. I just pick up the stitches as I come to them in the Vs and then I just continue decreasing on the side that it's needed on every other round until I am back down to 32 stitches total for needle two. I usually always do a size medium in my socks. So you wanna keep repeating round one and round two. If you need more of a written pattern, don't forget that there is a written pattern, Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop, that you can follow for this. The breakdown's the same for needle one and needle two and how the decreases and everything are worked. So if you need that, but you can always rewind this and watch it as many times as you need to go over round one of, which is the decrease round here. So keep repeating round one and round two until your needle two is back down to the original stitch count for the size that you are doing. And then when you meet me back here, we can chat about the foot length and when you start your toe. I've now finished my gusset decreases. I'm back down to 16 stitches on this side of the marker and 16 stitches on that side of the marker. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this marker and knit across to the end of needle two. Then I'm gonna show you how you can measure for your foot length so that you know when to start the toe. So for the medium size that I'm doing, I need to measure, 
My foot needs to measure 1.75 inches less than the total length of my foot. So the first way that I'll show you is with a tape measure. You just want to lay your sock flat like this, and we're gonna measure from the back of the heel flap. So I have a tape measure here. Just pull a bit out, and you want to put the start of your tape measure at the back of your heel flap and measure up to that cord right there. And that's gonna tell you how long your foot is so far. So that's one way. And make sure you do for the size that you're doing for this medium size, the length needs to be 1.75 inches less than the total foot length. And that is when you start your toe. Another thing that I like to use is a sock ruler. And this is the only way I measure my socks anymore. I started out always doing the tape measure as soon as I used one of these, I've never went back. I even have just put on here, just kind of scratched in with the pencil. That's where I start my husband's toe. That's where I start my toe. That's where I start my mother-in-law's toe. I put on here when to start the toe when I'm doing an afterthought heel. I love this so much. This is the adult size. They do have children's sizes as well. So the way that you use this is you pull your sock up like this. This is your heel turn back here. You stick this right inside of the sock and make sure that bumps up, that heel turn is right there. Start of the heel turn. And then you just pull your fabric up this way. Make sure you are not stretching. So if I stretch it, I can make that go a long ways. Do not stretch your fabric. Just gently fold it out because it can roll. So you wanna make sure that stays right there at the tip of the heel turn, roll it up, and then you can see where you are. Obviously a ways away from where I start my toe. <laughs> so that's how you measure your foot. Now you just want to continue knitting. You're not doing any more decreases. You're back down to what you started with on needle two. Needle one never changed. So needle two is back down to your original starting stitch count. And you're just gonna keep knitting around all the way down your foot until you are where you need to begin your toe. And I will meet you back here and show you how to do the toe on your sock. And we're almost done y'all. You've almost knit a sock on two circular needles. This foot part should fly by for you. I'm now ready to begin toe decreases. So I decided to do this sock for my husband, Eric, so it's quite a bit longer than it would have been for me, but he recently purchased a suit for work and this navy will match his suit perfectly. So I thought these would be great to make for him. So you can see I did use a, I forgot to show this on the gusset area. This is the 60th round where I did that half a round on the front and then did the heel flap on the back. I like to place a different marker there so that I can tell this was the leg, this was the foot, and then I can make that second sock to match just by how many rounds I did on the first sock. So I measure as I go on the first sock for the foot and then the second sock, I just do how many rounds I did on the first sock. So for the toe decreases, we are going to be repeating two rounds. There's two sections to the toe. This first section, we're gonna be repeating two rounds. It'll be the same as how when we did the gusset decreases, how we had a decrease round and then a plain knit round. That's gonna be the same for this first part of our toe. So we're gonna start on needle one. And this is going to be our decrease round. We are going to knit one Slip, slip, knit. And then knit to the last three stitches on needle one. Okay. 
We're to our last three stitches on needle one and now we are going to knit two stitches together and then knit one. And we're going to turn our work, pull needle one so that the work is in the center of the cable and get needle two ready. And it's going to be the same thing across needle two. So we are going to knit one, slip, slip, knit, and then knit across to the last three stitches on needle two. to our last three stitches we're going to knit two together knit one turn your work so that you're back to your beginning of round and back to needle one and now you're going to do a plain knit round and again that means you just knit all the way around no decreases you're going to be repeating those two rows so do your decrease row, a plain knit row, decrease row, plain knit row, until you have 16 stitches on the front needle and 16 stitches on the back needle. And then when you get to that point, meet me back here and we will, I'll show you the next section of the toe decreases. All right, so the first part of my toe is done. You can see it starting to go in here with the decreases. So I am now to 16 stitches on needle one and 16 stitches on needle two, 32 stitches total. That is for the size that I'm doing. Um, make sure that you do what you need for your size. Now for the final part of the toe, we are going to be decreasing every round. So we're down to 16 stitches on the front needle, 16 stitches on the back needle for the size medium. Um, now we need to decrease down to eight stitches on the front needle and eight stitches on the back needle. That's for all sizes. So to do that, we're just going to do that decrease row every single round. So that is the knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit across to the last three stitches on needle one. knit two together, knit one, turn your work, knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit across to the last three stitches on needle two, knit two together, knit one. So you wanna keep doing that decrease round every round. Got my yarn all wrapped around here. Every single round, no more plain knit rounds at this point until there's eight stitches on the front needle, eight stitches on the back needle, and then it'll be time to Kitchener the toe of our sock. I've completed the last couple of rounds that were needed here to get to eight stitches on the front needle, eight stitches on the back, 16 stitches total. You can see that finishes off our toe really nicely. And now we're ready to Kitchener. We're ready for the last, last bit other than weaving in our ends. So you just wanna cut a tail of yarn here. It doesn't have to be super long, but my theory is it's always better to have a little bit too much than not enough. I have a tapestry needle that I'm going to thread the yarn through. Oh, of course I've split it. <laughs> there we go. All right, we are ready to Kitchener. So you are gonna push both of the needle one and needle two through and have the yarn 
and everything up here on the end. So we've got our yarn right here and it's gonna be pulled down right there, making sure it's not wrapping around any of the needles or anything. And we're going to start on the front needle and we're going to put the needle through this first stitch as if to knit and pull the yarn through. Then we're going to slide that stitch we just worked off the needle. This next stitch on needle one, we're gonna put the needle through as if to purl. Pull the yarn through. Leave that stitch on. We're gonna to go to needle two. We're gonna take the um, tapestry needle and put it through the first stitch as if to purl and take it off. I kind of do that at the same time. Slip it through as if to purl, take it off, pull the yarn through. The next stitch on needle two, you can see I'm just putting the tapestry needle in between the two needles here. And this next stitch, we're gonna go into it as if to knit, pull the yarn through. And at that point, we're gonna give it just a little tug, just to tighten up where we've worked those stitches there. So those are the four steps to the Kitchener stitch. So again, we're going back to needle one. We're gonna go in the first stitch on needle one as if to knit, pull the yarn through, pull the stitch off. The next stitch on needle one, we're gonna go into it as if to purl, pull the yarn through, leave the stitch on. Now to needle two, we're gonna go into the first stitch on needle two as if to purl, take the stitch off, pull the yarn through. The next stitch on needle two, we're gonna go into it as if to knit, pull the yarn through, and at that point, give it a little tug. Back to needle one. You're just repeating these four steps across all of these stitches to Kitchener them closed. So back to needle one, first stitch as if to knit, take the stitch off as if to purl, leave the stitch on. Back to needle two, as if to purl, take the stitch off, pull the yarn through. Second stitch on needle two, as if to knit, pull the yarn through and give it a little tug at that point. That just, when you're kitchening these stitches, they can be kind of loose as you're going. So when you complete that fourth step, you're just giving that a tug to tighten up those stitches right there. Back to needle one, as if to knit, pull the yarn through, take the stitch off, as if to purl, pull the yarn through, leave the stitch on. Needle two, as if to purl, take the stitch off, pull the yarn through. Needle two, as if to knit, pull the yarn through and give it a tug. So let's just keep working those four steps across these last stitches. Okay, we are down to two stitches, one on needle one, one on needle two. Just gonna give them a tug. I just completed the fourth step. And now we're just gonna take the needles out. 
I know there are beginning and end steps typically to a Kitchener stitch, but I honestly don't mess with them because they can leave very distinct dog ears on each side of your toe. And that drove me nuts when I used to do it that way. So eliminating that like first processing step and end processing step eliminates the dog ears. You can see there's still this here, but we're, that's just where we need to close it up. So to do that, I like to stick my hand up inside of the sock to the toe. And see my fingernail right there in that gap. And we're just going to pull this up and forward. And then we're going to look to see where that, see if it'll focus. Where, when we pull that up, you can see the gap there where my fingernail is. When we pull that up, where does it naturally want to fall to? And typically it's this stitch right here. You just wanna kind of pull it up and see where it's gonna naturally come to when you pull it up and towards you. And that's with the front of the sock on the palm of my hand holding it that way. Then you just want to pull that in and look, no dog ears, nothing. Now we're just going to flip it inside out so that we can weave in all of our ends. First one, it's already here on the needle where we closed that Kitchener up. I just like to do a little bit of a zigzag and I'm going into the backs of the stitches here, splitting the strands as I'm going, making sure that my needle is not going through to the front of the work. I like to come down about four stitches doing that. And then go up back up about four stitches, and then down one more time. Just splitting those strands. So I've always woven in my ends. None have ever come undone on me, and you cannot see it on the front of the work if you're splitting the strands and keeping your yarn on the back. So we'll just snip that off, that end is woven in. Leave this on here. This is the part where I check my gusset area for any holes that there may be. Start on one side, you can see your heel flap gusset. I come right to this corner. That's where if there's gonna be any holes, I will have them. So you can see this side, no holes. It's typically always on this side. There's just a small little gap there. I'm never phased by it. It's handmade, y'all. Nothing is ever gonna be perfect. Nobody is perfect. So what I'm doing is just bringing this leftover bit of yarn, and I'm gonna do the zigzag Z through the backs of these stitches, up for four stitches, down for four stitches, back up for four, and then we're just gonna kind of go through any spots here going around where the hole is or the gap. I don't really like calling it a hole because it just seems like there's like this wrong thing. There's a little gap there. And then I'm just going to do the zigzag to finish off the yarn, secure the end. Cut the yarn. Look, no more hole is that simple. Left a bit of a longer tail there. Let's cut that off. Okay, last end to weave in is up here at the top. So we're gonna take that off. Get this end ready to go. I'm gonna show you how to close up any gap you may have there. So you can see there's a little bit, just a little bit of an indent there where I, I don't do anything special when I join in the round because I do this every time I close it up. So it just works. So we have our tail coming from this side. We're gonna go over to this side and grab the top of the next stitch. Just 
just going under both legs there at the top, pulling it. You can see it's kind of starting to close it up. We're gonna come back over to this side, grab the top of a stitch, just the ones right there next to the V. And you can do that just a couple of times done. And we're just going to weave this end in right here in the purl column of the ribbing. Same thing, I'm just going through splitting these strands just to secure the yarn. It can be a little tricky in the purl columns because you can't really do a Z, but I just grab it the best I can. It's on the inside of the sock. I've never had anyone look at my ends and say, oh my gosh, why did you weave them in that way? It's fine. It's on the inside. No one's going to see it. All right. That's all of our ends. I always leave my markers in. And then as I knit the second sock, I will take them out. So I'll do my ribbing. When I get to the spot where I'm ready to put in my first 10 round marker, I'll just take it off of this sock and put it on the second and do that as I go down. And it just helps me to see where I am in the sock. Okay, so we've just completed our sock on two circulars. There it is, it's done. Like I said, this is for my husband. So it's a little larger than I would normally do for me. But this is such a great way. I've really enjoyed learning this method. When I first started out with two circulars, I wasn't sure how I would feel about it. I just kind of thought why this versus magic loop, they are so similar, but this is definitely something fun to have in my tool belt. And I've really enjoyed it. I hope that you guys enjoyed learning this new method. Let me know below how you feel about it. Some people learned this way versus learning magic loop. So this is their go-to. But if you're new to coming to this method, let me know below if you enjoyed learning it, if it's something that you will put into your regular rotation of socks. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy knitting.